Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Maker's special webinar series. Today's topic is Relay Test Management Software Element Testing on SEL 351S. My name is Michael Fleischer, and I'm the Digital Marketing Specialist for Maker. I'll be acting as the moderator for today's presentation and supporting you on any technical issues or questions for our presenter. On the right side of your screen, you will see a control panel that looks similar to this one. You can submit questions at any time during the presentation by typing in the box highlighted in red, and I will read the questions out during the Q&A segment at the end of the webinar. Additionally, certificate of attendance, copy of the presentation, and a link to the video recording of this webinar will be sent to all attendees in two business days. Our presenter today is David Beard, Relay Applications Engineer. Also to assist with the question and answer session, we will have joining us Sugosh Cooper, Relay Applications Engineer, and Abel Gonzalez, Applications Engineer. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today, David. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, I want to tell everybody thank you uh, for taking some time out today to kind of watch through our webinar. Um, I greatly appreciate it. I'm glad everybody's out there being safe and uh, hopefully we can get through this a little bit and uh, everybody learn a little bit from each other in here. Um, what we want to do is the the topic uh, is is going to be using RTMS software and uh, which is a mega uh, uh, proprietary software that we use for the SMRT units and we want to discuss how we would actually sit down and test the relay. Um, I will need to go over a few things um, just because I'm kind of generalizing the idea of, uh, you know, if we're on site, if we're um, uh, testing for a customer, if you're on a bench. So it just kind of gives you, we're, we're going to kind of hit a few things uh, all the way around, but we also just want to make sure that the, the main idea is we're just going to test using the software. But like when I get into this guy right here, so this this next guideline for the testing, what we're trying to do again is trying to lay down a few things um, that we can that we need and look for when we're out on on the job or on location. Um, and so the testing guidelines uh, are important for this aspect, but also we want to make sure uh, if we have a chance uh, if we're on you know. On bench testing, uh, sometimes we test uh, on the bench as we would in the field. So um, let's go to uh, the first one. So what, what we're doing is in our test requirements, um, what we like to say too is uh, test requirements can be a mixture of anything. So what we got is we want to make sure we where we get in the truck we drive to location uh, we want to consult with the customer uh, we want to consult with the customer on the type of equipment uh, that they need to, to have tested we also want to consult with what do they want to test and how do they want to test right so um, we we have a few things like NIDA uh, we have NERT guidelines we have uh, IEEE specifications or it can even be um, a test requirement can also be just that owner operator of that equipment. Uh, they can have their own um, type of maintenance plan and the way that they do their own testing as well. So that we need to look out for these things whenever we're on location because we definitely don't just want to go off and start just grab a relay and start taking off testing it. We need to find some baseline. We need to know what does our customer want. Um, what do what do you not only the customer but for owner operators? What do you guys need? What what how do you want to set up your maintenance plan? How do you want to do some testing? Um, when you look at uh, for example the uh, test plan to perform NERT testing, then it's always good to have the previous test results. <laughs> and when you do the previous test results. What this allows us to do is test consistently, right? So when, uh, and I'm speaking from experience a little bit, is when you go to a job site and you're testing for a customer and they, they're they using a uh, NERC guideline, they're saying, okay, I'm gonna use the uh, NIDA spec uh, from 2017. And you are used to testing customers today in need spec 2019 right so what you need to do is have that conversation with the customer say okay this is i want to make sure that we have the correct standard that we're going by 
I want to make sure that I'm performing the same style of tests that you had previously. So all your documentation is the same. So in the end of tests and relays, no matter how we do the testing of the relay and verify that it's going to be that it's that it's good for that maintenance cycle, we just need to make sure that we uh, compare apples to apples. So uh, in that, we also want to do setting verification. So when you go to when you're asking for this type of documentation from a customer or your boss or you know however it works out, the the settings are very important and what you want to make sure that the settings that are in the relay are current. Um, and I mean updated. If these settings are not updated, there's a very good chance you could either be testing uh, old, older settings, of course, something could have happened, a fault could have happened in the system, and then they could come back and point fingers at you because they had another set of settings, an updated version that didn't get put in the relay during the time of testing, right? So that's very important to kind of ask engineering, ask the customer, ask the, the supervisor, hey, are these the actual settings that are in the relay or up to date or are they not? Um, or if they aren't, then let me, if there's any changes that need to be made, give those to me now. We'll make the changes in the relay because we're already there. And then we'll go ahead and start performing the test. That way the tests will reflect, the test results will actually reflect the new settings that were input at that point in time. And also, too, it's good to have a note in there as well. New install of new settings, setting changes were were applied to relay this date. You know, that way it kind of in maybe, uh, you know, it's always hard to hold people's names to things, but you can always put their name in there. Um, and then it gives you an idea, what, you know, a little place to document what you've done as a as a test technician. And, and it doesn't matter. Uh, Customer base, this is your equipment, whatever. You, the documentation trail is huge, and that's what we really need. So setting verification is very important. Uh, I did come up across uh, a couple years back, I came across a, um, a generator relay that didn't have any settings in it. Uh, it had been running for a few years with no settings in it. And when I went to the relay to perform the, the maintenance testing, there, nothing was enabled, there was no logic, it was like it was never programmed. And that could have been a very huge problem. Um, without the proper settings in the relay, what had ended up happening is the test group before I had gotten there was actually the settings. Um, apparently got, uh, they pulled the settings out, saved them, but never v compared, never did a comparison of the setting that you pulled out with the setting that's actually in the relay. And so the equipment had been running with no settings. Uh, it just, the relays were monitoring input, uh, monitoring the current voltage values like they should and nothing ever tripped. Everything seemed to be good, but they lucked out. And, and that again comes back to the setting verification part is we wanna make sure that we get what is actually uh, updated, make sure it is programmed. The, uh, we also, the other thing is when we go to substations, uh, a, a thing I, I learned through the utility is make sure that we have some type of emergency information. Uh, in the substation, there uh, we used to put a piece of paper in there that had the GPS coordinates of the substation, had uh, telephone numbers to local and fire uh, departments in those areas. And, and before we didn't have that, uh, we, and when you're a test technician by yourself, and you're going out to location, you want to make sure that you have a way to get help if needed, if you need help. So it's always good to have this information, whether the customer or, or if you own the equipment and you don't have this information in the sub, create a little small sheet, just a document, put it up in the, in the panel. And uh, that way at least helps everybody out. Uh, I think it's more prevalent now, uh, but before it was, we didn't have anything like that. So I always like to bring that up. Um, when we're in the substation, make sure you're in the right substation. Um, I, I know it sounds weird, but you know sometimes you could be in the wrong location. Uh, you can be at a substation that has a very similar name. Um, you can be somewhere where it used to be this name and now it's something else. Make sure you're in the correct substation. Uh, make sure when you jump on these panels to start doing some relay testing that you're on the correct panel as well. 
we want to make sure that we eliminate all human error possibilities that we can because we don't want to get on the wrong panel, get on the wrong relay, pull the relay out of service, and we cause an inadvertent trip. And then there's a lot of explaining that has to happen at that point. And I, I never like to be a part of those conversations. Uh, make sure the relay is programmed. Yeah, and make sure we have the original setting file before we test. So that's a good point. When you go to uh, the relay, you want to make sure that you pull the original file out before you do any testing. Um, you want to save it as an as found and save it in its own proprietary uh, format. So what I mean is if you're, uh, like we're going to see today, we're doing the uh, SCL 351, we want to make sure I'm using Accelerator, using the appropriate software uh, for that relay. I want to save the original file in their original uh, file format, and then I'll go in and we'll start adjusting a few things, and then we have a, the original as found file uh, saved. So if we messed up or did anything during our test, or maybe we uh, got through half of it and something happened, we had to leave, we had the original file to dump back into the relay and not leave it unprotected. Uh, also, we want to make sure that we're testing uh, elements. When we do our test, we want to make sure that we're testing what's in the trip logic. Um, a lot of times they get uh, a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of conversation that goes on about this and uh, you know uh, I have heard over the years well let's test the logic well that's great um, let's do that because that's essentially what's going to make the relay operate when you're actually testing the logic though if the elements that you have in the logic are not enabled then it's not really going to do you much good right because now I'm I have a lot of uh, uh, I have a lot of elements that are not enabled, but yet I'm trying to prove the logic and it's just not working out for me. Uh, vice versa, if I have elements that are enabled and the logic portion of it uh, doesn't have those elements in there, then those aren't going to do me any good either. So it's always nice to know what is the relay going to operate on. And we'll see that here in a minute. So what do I need for this? Well, you know, I, I know this sounds crazy, but sometimes people... Uh, uh, don't have all the equipment that they need when they show up on location. And what does this do? This cuts, this actually eats into uh, not only profits, but also eats into time, uh, the technician's time. I, I can't tell you how many times I've driven off and left something, that it, you know, a, a lead or maybe even a power cord, and then I had to go hunt it down at a local uh, Walmart or some other store because I didn't have the right stuff. I didn't take the right equipment. And then I look bad because I've been on site and I didn't have everything that I was prepared to do the job. And, uh, you know, just make sure you do a one time check. Uh, what I have on here is just kind of an idea of what what, what all is needed. You got a PCs needed, you know, to to keep your documentation and so forth. Uh, maybe you'd like to test from the PC, maybe you'd like testing from the STVI. You know, you can use the handheld version and hook up to the unit and use the testing. Maybe I like both. Uh, maybe I like to see what's happening with STVI while I'm using PC. Make sure you got everything that you have lined out first. Um, we also have uh, what's really nice too to help uh, help shorten a little bit of connection time is this RLC adapter. And the RLC adapter, as you can see, actually plugs into the top of the unit, and then we can actually have the uh, the banana jack ends that can go to the test set or the test switch that we'll see here in a minute. The uh, RTMS software is what we're going to be utilizing today, and it's the same software that we're using on the PC as you can use on the STVI. So um, we're trying to make life a little simple here. I mean, we don't need a whole bunch of things. Um, table, you know, chair, that's always nice. Maybe you like to stand. Um, bring something to eat. Um, this is important. You're going to be in the substation all day. Um, even if you're not in the substation, you're sitting out in the yard, you're going to be there all day. Bring something healthy to eat. Bring some snacks. Bring some water. Make sure you have uh, uh, something to keep you going during the day because we want to make sure that your performance doesn't doesn't drop because you're tired or you needed a snack or a pick-me-up. Make sure you have these items there because if you have to leave to go get them, then again, that takes time. And that's something that you don't have really the luxury of when you're trying to do these jobs. Um, on a time base. Uh, something to drink, some tools, and also I put in this uh, nice little power adapter here. 
And the reason why I put this in here is a lot of times you cannot go and plug in a power strip into just the wall outlet at a customer's location without it at least having a surge protector, right? So a good a good surge protector, you buy a good one and keep it around with you. Uh, the next accessories here, uh, what I'm showing is there's multiple items that, that, that Mega provides, or it doesn't provide, but we, we sell as accessories. Um, is the state's paddle which is very popular uh, a lot of people have it i've got a whole bunch of these throughout the years um, we also have the new state's paddle uh, that's out as well which is really nice because then it eliminates me having to use the connectors uh, on the top of the paddle and then also we have some nice flexible leads and some alligator clips so this helps with us uh, plugging into the the actual test panel if there's a test switch available if not then we can actually use these plugs uh, a different way actually we can plug them into the front of the relay the electromechanical style if you're using the four plugs we can just plug them to the back I'm just showing a few examples of how these connectors work um, you can lift open the the uh, uh, little nut lock uh, hand twist uh, nut on the top put in the four plug here uh, you can actually do it on the top of these new the paddles with these extra inserts where you can plug your banana jack in on this side and you can actually do the fork lug. And then uh, here's another view of that as well where the banana plug comes into the side and then also we have other lugs that can go in from the top where banana jacks can just go in. So there's a lots of different accessories or lots of different options. Um, the new states plug uh, that we do have is really nice. Um, I Again, your banana jack just plugs right in here. I mean, it's pretty slick. Um, use this in the test panel. Um, use it on electromechanical relays if you're testing on a bench. Also, this helps uh, when you notice here, you also, when we're using the uh, uh, lead set, it actually helps with the relief, uh, strain relief from the top from the leads actually being bent over. Uh, this was something that they actually came apart with or developed for the leads to just hang down from the front. So this always is, is very nice and not having them come from the top of the actual plug here too. Okay, um, so what I before we get into the software and start creating these tests and starting to test, I need to tell you a little bit about how my setup is. Uh, that way you kind of get an idea of what we're using. So I am using a SMRT uh, 46D and this is my relay. So the relay I have is the, the 351S relay. Uh, I'm using the four lugs that are tied to the back of the relay. Here's for my output and then I am also have the same lugs that I'm utilizing for my currents and voltages and also for my power supply which I don't have shown. It's over here and I'm doing a hook straight to the wall for the 120 volt uh, supply, but I still needed the extra four plugs. So there's 18 total that I've used uh, for this wiring uh, on this on this relay. Here's what the test set looks like. So I have the 46D sitting here. I have all my test leads coming out of the top, and then they're coming in for the reds for my voltages, and my yellow cable is for my currents. And you'll notice on the back here where I have them just jacked in. Uh, polarity, non-polarity, polarity, non-polarity all the way down, and then my voltage for uh, A, B, and C, and then also for my binary input on this side as well. So I'm actually using out 107 for this test, and this will actually use uh, come down here and connect to binary input number one, and that will be important whenever we're actually walking through these tests. Okay. Uh, to communicate with the relay itself. Multiple different ways to connect to relay, ethernet, USB. Um, this is the way I'm connected. I'm using an SEL cable, um, connecting USB to PC, and then this end, of course, goes to the front. Some of the SEL relays, you'll probably notice they don't have a front port to have it in the back. Same cable, same same software. You know, uh, it's, it's pretty simple and easy to actually connect to this particular relay. All right, this is this is the stuff we get excited about. So we're gonna come off of this guy for a second. Uh, all right. So this is RTMS, and what we're doing with RTMS is we need to start somewhere, 
right? So we need to have, what was I saying earlier in the, in the previous slides is we need our equipment. So the equipment is test set, test software, all the good stuff. We also need is, we also need to, uh, I might have to close this thing off. This is not working for me, uh, this guy. Um, so what we need is the proprietary software from the relay itself. So this is Accelerator, right? And so what I have done previously is to download the settings from the relay itself, from the 351. And what I'm going to look for in here is I'm going to look at my sets, my setting for my uh, different elements that are enabled. I'm also going to be looking at my logic, right? So when I come and open these guys up, I'm only in group one. That's why I've only have one open. And then every element that is a that is available to me uh, is inside the settings and then also the trip logic, correct? So what I want to do is for our testing purposes here, I have set up a few elements. I've set up the phase uh, instantaneous uh, overcurrent, the neutral uh, ground overcurrent, the residual ground instantaneous overcurrent, phase time overcurrent, neutral, uh, residual, the ground element as well. I've done the uh, uh, set the voltage elements and the frequency elements uh, in this uh, demonstration we're showing today. So what I also need to go for is uh, uh, trip logic, right? So the trip logic is going to be more of an example because I want to kind of show the difference of what we're going to do if we're testing element based or if we need to test logically based. Okay, so when you come into a relay, uh, when I'm in the field and I walk up to a relay and I'm doing this as a job, like for a customer, um, I mean, it's all a job, but I do one for a customer, then I'm going to come in here. My immediate thought is I need to see what the trip logic is. The reason why I come straight to the trip logic is because I want to know, is this relay actually have any logic in it? Um, if the relay doesn't have any logic in there, then that's number one. That's a question I need to go talk to the customer for. You know, I need to say, hey, you know, this thing isn't programmed. And then the other thing I'll do is if there's no logic, is I'll actually come up here to this general settings and I want to see if it's actually been uh, changed from default settings, right? So these relays come pre-programmed with default settings. And a lot of times I want to make sure that they're programmed. And if they are, a lot of times the engineering department will tie some name or some type of terminal identifier name or number or, you know, maybe a SIP number, maybe a NERC number, whatever they want to tie it with will actually be in these these areas. It will not be the default settings that SEO or, you know, for this example, SEL is using. So I want to make sure that everything is set. I want to come into my trip. And then I'm going to look at the very first trip logic equation. So I'm going to say, okay, well, trip is SV3T right here. Okay. So what this is going to be is this is the SEL variable logic control, the equation. And then the T is for the trip is a timer, right? So if there's any type of time delay associated with this, then it'll wait till the timer once a, this uh, um, element here goes high then there'll be a time that actually ends and then we'll close this trip contact. Now the trip contact is actually tied to, in this output contact, it's actually tied down here on out 203, okay? So when I come to SB3T, that doesn't really tell me anything. Uh, all it's telling me is that there's something there. So what I wanna do is I need to go to SEL control logic equations. I will come down to the control. I will come in here and count to three. So I need to find the third one, right? SV1, two, and here's three. And here's my logic equation. So when this logic equation goes high, then this trip condition will also go high. And once this trip condition goes high, then this output contact will close. That's, that's it. That's It's that simple. Now, when I come into the SEO logic control, I need to find out what all this is, right? So if I was on a customer location, I would say, okay, I have to break this down and go into each one of these, of these equations and figure out what all needs to happen in order for me to make this variable go high. 
Well, what's really cool is I have this nice little tool in here. It is a graphical graphical logic uh, mapping. And what we can do is we can see what this is. So I'm going to scroll down. And I'm looking for SV3T, or actually SV3, right here. So you can see this right here. I've got it highlighted. So I'm going to double click that guy. And what's happening here is now I have a picture, pretty much have a picture of what's going on. So looking at this, I could tell really quick, I need these inputs, any one of these inputs in, one, uh, in 201 through 206, I need one of these guys to go high, right? And through this OR gate to give me one side of my AND gate. Then I need to come down and do the 50 element and 50G or 50P for the phase or the ground, one of these guys has to go high on this OR gate to give me the other side of the AND. Once both these two conditions are met, then I'm going to get a one out here and SV3 is going to go high. As you see here, there's no time delay, right? The time delay is at zero, so it'll be an instantaneous close, right? Or change of state, we'll say. So once that thing goes, changes the state, then Output contact number 203 is tied to this, right? So this guy's going to close. All right, that's how the logic equations work. Um, they get complex. They get very simple. Uh, this one, for the most part, is pretty simple. Um, but they, you can get crazy with these things. Uh, I've seen these things filled up, um, and it takes almost half a day just to figure it out. So what we're going to do today is we are going to element test. So what does that do for us? Today, we're, we saw how the logic equation works. We've seen how the logic is different between what we're looking for on a trip condition to an output condition and what this equation looks like, right? So today, we're going to control that. We actually control the logic, right? So what we're going to do is we, earlier, I told you that we were tied to out 107, right, on the relay. So on the out 107 on the relay, it has nothing tied to it, no logic, zero. What we want to do is we want to come in here and see how can we test these elements. So first element I would like to pick today is going to be the phase time overcurrent, and I'll have a good reason for that here in a minute. So what do we have enabled here? We have the enabled element of the 51P, right? So I have one level uh, enabled, and then now I get to see what these element names are. 51P1P has a 5 amps. I have a curve, right? So I have some type of uh, TCC curve that I need to look for. So it's U3. And I also have a time dial, right? Just like the old electromechanical days. We've got pickup, time dial, and the relay dictated the curve, right? So now I have a time dial three. I have no reset, uh, no extra adder on time, and no minimum response. So we're good there, right? So the first one I'm going to pick is this 51P1P. So what I need to do is I need to come to my test software, right, RTMS. This is the home screen of RTMS. So I need to test a 51 element. In order for me to do that, what am I going to test? I'm going to test pickup, and I'm also going to test the timing of that element, right? So I'm going to come in here, select new test. I'm going to come down and do my timing. This is for overcurrent timing test. Okay, so this is the screen that builds the tolerances and any pre-fault values uh, in RTMS. So what I want to do is I am going to, we're not electromechanical, right? So we're a microprocessor relay. I want to include the pickup test and I also want to do an instantaneous test later. And that's what I said I'll come back to and show you why I picked the 51 element first. So I'm going to put in the percent tolerance, right? And this is just a generic tolerance that's here. Uh, it, it does vary between relays. So I would highly recommend that before you add these tolerances to go ahead and make sure that you put the right tolerance for the right relay, for the right element, for the right test, right? Because there, there is a difference between pickups and times, and there's a difference between pickups of different elements. Um, so make sure that this is correct, how you need it. And then if you needed any type of pre-fault value uh, uh, voltage for however long duration, for this test, we will not. So I'm going to select. Okay. So I'm going to change this number of elements down to one. 
so we can explain and walk through each individual one. Let me get down to the basics of here. So this is actually, I have one number of elements here, but I'm only going to choose to do one right now um, because it's easier to walk through one element than have a whole bunch of elements up here at one time. So the first element I want to do is, remember what I said earlier? We're going to go back, uh, this guy, and we're going to pick the 50, 51P1P. Now, just because this element, we have to be very careful here too, because these elements, just because they say P on the end or have some other name at the end, these are a sub a subset of the main element, right? So the 51P1 is the actual pickup element. Now, with the time dial and everything else, these are subsets, right? So if, it, if I'm looking at a time, then I would do a 51P1T for the time, right? So this level is what I'm looking for, 51P1P5U33. Come back, I need to go, I want to name this what element I'm actually testing. 51P1, that is the main element, right? If I get a P, that's pickup. If I get a T at the end, that's time, right? I want the main element. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm doing this to you. I, this is going to be neat. So I've changed the name. Changed the name here. I need to decide what phases do I want to test. Well, for here, I'm just going to make it simple. Uh, we're going to do A and B and C phase. Okay. So what type of curve do I need? So the curve information is on the bottom. So I, it's an overcurrent, right? ANSI. So it's not ANSI. It's actually SCL relay. All means because if I chose another model, SEL is very good about using the same curve information for all the relays. So this makes our life a little bit easier. So we'll make it leave it at all. And then now we get to select the curve. So the curve is U3, right? Because I said that earlier in the settings that it was 5, U3, and then our time dial was 3. All right? There. Simple. All I did was add an element, rename it, select what type of fault I want, copy the settings, basically out of the setting, out of Accelerator, added these values here, I'm ready to go. Now I'm in the pickup screen, right? So this is 51 P1 pickup, right? So this is my pickup, this is what I want. Now, when you drop this guy down to change your test, you're going to notice there's two tests on there. One is going to be 51P1 pickup. One's going to be a timing, right? So this pickup value is going to be my pickup and timing. That just means I just created two tests by just setting up one, right? That one element now came with two tests, and that's the software giving us these options here. So the spot software is smart enough to know that if I am choosing a pickup, we're going to do a timing with it. So we're going to come in here, hit 51P1 pickup, right? I need to select the binary input. So now uh, in the connection diagram I showed uh, right before we started the testing was I'm tied to input number one, my test set. I also want it to be a uh, dry contact. I have the option of dry or wetted contact. This one's dry because my relay's on the bench. Uh, the other one is uh, normally open to close. You see the arrow going open to close or close to open. Okay. So for this one, I want to go open to close. And then the debounds time is minute for microprocessor relays. We can just leave the default setting. All right. So I hit OK. Do we think we have everything set up ready to go if I come over here and hit this play button? Well, since I can't hear any one of you, what we're going to do is the answer is no. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have to go to the accelerator program again, and we need to tell it what element, because we're element testing, what element goes to what output. So we are using output 107, and we have to now talk to the relay. So this is terminal that's in uh, accelerator, and I'll show you that quickly. If you get here, in the normal setting screen, right, it'll be this button here, terminal window. So once you select the terminal window, then the terminal comes up. Now I'm commun actively communicating to the relay, 
All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to go set. Let me get this out of the way. Set because I'm setting the relay space L for logic because this is where the output lies. See the logic here. Then the outputs lie within the logic. So L for logic out 107 is my spare contact that I chose to use for testing space terse. And terse means end of transmission or end of communication. And these commands are in the SL manual. So there's no magic here. You can go straight to the manual and get all this information. This is where it's at. I hit OK. First thing it's going to do is going to ask me. I said set L out 107. It's giving me out 107 equals zero. Well, what do I need? This is why I wanted to come here and explain why I actually labeled this element, why I did. So when I label this, I'm actually using a tip that I do to myself uh, that helps me remember what the masking element needs to be. So now I start creating tests with these element names. And these are the ones that I'm using to mask to, not the 51P1P, I'm actually going to end up having to mask the 51P1 element. That's how this works for this particular relay. So why not name my the name of my test this way? Well, that's what exactly what I did. So now I have the 51P1 here. I'm going to come in and say this is 51P1. Done. So once it goes to 51P1, then I have out 102 shows up next, right? Because in the relay, it's going, it's cascading to the next level, which will be the second row. If it does not go to the second row and this guy says out 107 here, then I know that this element name is incorrect. That's a good quick indicator that tells me, hey, you typed in the wrong element and this ain't going to work. Okay, but now I advance to the next output. I'm good. I'm going to type in end. I'm going to type in, do you want to save any changes? Yes, I do. I need to save those changes. And now I'm waiting on the magic response. Settings are saved. I am good to go. So I'm going to come in here to the check. 51 P1 pickup, ready to go. Okay. I want to run all the phases. I don't want to waste time. I just want to do them all. So now test sets running. And now we're going to have the contact value. You're going to notice you're going to see that setting that I had earlier. Here's our min and max values, which are the plus and minus the 5%. And then now it's actually ramping this value until the relay operates. Once that relay operates, then it'll come back and report the value to us. And we can use those in our results. Okay, so a little bit over, that's okay. So now that we have a test, we just completed the first test, done. It takes me longer to talk through it than it does to configure the test. When you're in here doing this, it's it's super fast. You don't even have to worry about it. All we're going to do is you get your idea of what you need to do to, to uh, talk to the relay itself. Timing. 51P1 timer. Remember I said that they actually gave, us two, gave me two tests? That's what we're going to next. I'm going to the second test. 51P1 timing. Uh, you notice here I have the uh, U3 curve, SEL. The curve is being populated for me on my graph. And it gives me multiples. So the good idea is that if it's in blue, you can change this, all right? So let's say you don't like 2, 3, and 5. Right? Maybe you're two, 2, 4, and 6. Then change it. You can change those. If, if you don't like to have the 2.5, I always do 15 amps on the first one. That's fine. Do whatever you want. Um, it's very easy to change these values because they're, we're actually going to accommodate that up and down the graph. So this is all editable here. Uh, I will go back to the two, uh, three. I just want to show you guys how that worked out. Okay. And then now um, we have the 51P1 timing test. This is a different test, right? But for me, my connections didn't change, but my test did. So I still need to come over here and verify. So let's verify binary inputs are correct. Binary input one, I'm actually dry. Normally open to close. Everything looks good. Now, what else do I need to do? I got to go talk to the relay. So I got to go back to the relay. 
got to go back to the relay. And now I need to go, let me raise this up a little bit. I need to do set space L space out. Everybody's going to be saying this in their sleep. Terse. Uh, okay. So now I have out 107 was my 51 P1, but that's not going to work because my pickup's going to be, is going to come a lot faster than my time. So what I need now is to 51 P1T, right, for time. This is going to catch this delay here, right, with my time dial on my curve. It's going to act in conjunction here. This is going to give me this time. That's what I'm looking for. End, E-N-D. You notice I advanced to out 201. Yep, that means this element name is good. And if you don't know these names, they're in the manual. All the element names are in the manual. End. Save changes. Yes. Waiting for the magic response. All right. Settings are saved. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the relay itself. I hit OK. Uh, yeah. Let's do all the phases. We just want to test it. Right? So now what are we doing? We're actually injecting current according to the values that we set. Two times the setting of 10. Right, which was the setting was five, 15 and 25. So now we're just waiting for our times. You're going to notice the arrow is going to go up and click on each individual phase. It's going to do two, three, and five. And then at the end of that, we'll have our report and all of our timing information. So just the last one to go to. Almost there. And one last one. Okay, so now when we're doing this, uh, this test is complete. We have tested everything in here. We've done the pickup and the timing for the 51 P1, correct? So those are the only two tests we can we would actually run. So now we want to go back to our relay. Uh, the relay and when we come to the relay I said we had we had these instantaneouses we also had the time over current grounds so we can we have one or two options we can just go ahead and do all the timing so we'll probably end up knocking that out or we can run instantaneous but since we're in the timing mode let's do all the timing so I'm going to go down to the ground because I don't have to change connections now in this particular relay as you've seen in the slides before that I actually had a neutral connection so I want to wait until I'm done with all with most of the tests that I can do now I'll come back and then make the connection change and run all the tests that I can at that point in time as well so right now I'll do the 51 G1 and it has a setting of 2.5 U3 for the curve 1.5 for the time dial okay so I'm gonna come in and do we're gonna go to timing screen again right we're gonna open this back up and I'm going to increase the number of elements that I have, right? So now I need to increase it to two. It came up, this is just a default name. Don't let this name throw you off. This name can be changed, right? So what I like to do is I like to just clear it all off, clear every all the default values, come in here, make it my own. So it's 51 G1, right? Now I have an element of 51 P, P1, 51 G1. Well, it's a ground element, so it catch all three phases, right? It's an SEL. Come in here, grab this. And the E curve is U3. The pickup value was 2.5, right, from the settings we saw. And the time dial is 1.5. Right? So everything, now I'm set. I'm ready to go. Hit check mark. But I see this screen. This is my old screen, my timing screen of the 50p element. Well, drop the there and drop this baby down. Now I get the 51 G1 pickup and timing. So now the software again has created two tests for me. It created a pickup and a timing test. So now I get to go to pickup. And I need to make sure, and this is just a, a process. Once you start going through the process, you just do it like clockwork. Always check the binary input. Everything looks good. Come down. And then I have 51 G1. I can't run the test yet. I need to change the relay. So I gotta change my relay. So I'm gonna bring this information up. Go set space L space out 107. 
I'm going to say this in my sleep tonight. Uh, space terse. And it's kind of getting down at the bottom. Uh, let me see if I can kind of help it out a little bit right there. Put it in the middle. Okay. So what I want to do is I need to do 51G1, right? Why? Well, that's why I named my test this way. So I can remember what I need to put in for my element. You see the see the little trick there? All right. So now I went out 202 is the next one. I know it took this element. And yes. All right. We saved the settings. I'm ready to go. Hit play. Ah, run all phases. Why not? So now we're doing the same thing we did before in our 51 P1 pickup is we're actually get a setting value, min and max, which is our plus and minus 5% I set in the tolerance screen. And then uh, it's actually increasing the current until the relay operates. So very a minimal amount of effort put into creating the tests, right? I have these tests. They're already in here. I'm, I'm doing the actual test. When you get, let me show you after this one, watch this. So now I'm in the timing screen. I get a little pumped with this, this is cool. Uh, timing screen, okay, so I need to go binary input again, right, because this test has changed. I have a test, but my connection's never changed. Make sure, do a quick check, yep, everything looks good. Okay, now I need to go to the SEL. Right, I need to tell it as set L space out 107 space terse. Terse. Okay. Uh, this is a 51G1T for time. Right? Because I'm fixing to do a time current curve here. Okay. Everything looks good. I got out 201 there. Awesome. Save. Yes. Wait for the magic response. Bam, save, love it. All right, run the test, all phases. Yeah, so now we're running the U3 curve at the two and a half uh, pickup point, two times, three times, five times. And we're pretty much right on the money. So we're running the test. So it was gonna be a little quicker, of course. All right, last one. All right, cool. So what I was saying just before this test is I was creating tests, right? Well, you're like, oh, I didn't see any tests. They're not being, I don't see anything created. We're running one timing test and that's it. Well, if you see this guy here, this one with the T at the lightning bolt is where our test list is. So in this test list, every test that I have set up and ran uh, here today has been populated in this test list. So what is this going to do for us? Well, basically I can save this off and now I can save it as a template and I don't have to redo this. All I got to do now is come back a ne the next panel over. If it's the same relay, if it's the same relay, a different time, uh, same relay, different location, whatever it is, you can actually just, all you need to do is apply the settings to it. And that's it. Uh, the test plan's already built. You come in here, select this, select the, the edit test screen, and then apply the setting values. That's all you gotta do. And then run the test. Now again, you, if you're doing it by, you know, you talk through the relay, do the element test, if that's what you're doing, and then it, you still gotta go down that road. But right here, we're just building the test as we go. So each one's actually being populated in a template for us. We don't have to build it, run the test, create it, go add it to a template, come back. No, let's just let this, let the, the software do the work for us. Okay, so we'll come in. Uh, the next test is gonna be the uh, 50, uh, let's do the 51N. All right, so here we have a 51N enable. Right, and uh, so this is gonna be, it's neutral, it takes a different connection. So let me change my connections over. 
to the neutral CT on the relay. Okay. And now we have uh, 51N1P, right? So the pickup value is 3, U3, 1.5, and nothing else extra after that. Okay. So 3U3, 1.5. Now I'm going to go to RTMS. I'm going to, oh, I selected that on accident. Uh, the um, nameplate icon. And now I get to add another element, right? So I'm going to add three. So it's going to populate another element for me. I'm going to go to three. I need to select this first level, right? So I can get into its properties. This is basically its properties. So every one of these elements has its own properties. So if I go to P1, it says, here's the SEL, here's the, here's the values and settings for this element. Here's the values and the, the setting values for this particular element. So now this element's unique. It's going to be itself too. So we're going to do 51 and 1, right? And then now I need to select, uh, it's going to be a neutral because it's actually tied to its own CT uh, in the relay. So I'm going to just select neutral. I'm going to select the SEL again, right? Because all the curves are in the test. All the curve manufacturers that we have are in here. If you do see a curve that's in here, um, or a curve that's not in here for your particular relay, please let us know. Um, SEL, all, we want to do U3, right? And the pickup value is three. The U3, this is 1.5.5. That's all we need. We're done. Go to the next one. Now I need to drop the list down, right? It created two tests for me. Awesome. I like that. And 51 in one pickup, right? You notice there's only one in. There's only going to be one. There's no other phases. It's one phase. It's it. It's a return. So what I want to do too is I need to make sure, again, binary input. Let's go through the motions. Uh, everything looks good. Now I want to go to the relay and tell it set space L out 107 terse. Okay, this is now going to be 51 in one, right? Why is it 51 in one? Well, I already looked it up earlier in the manual, but also I was smart enough to make sure that I label my test this value. So I can just double check it here. There it went to 10201. Awesome. And yes. Setting save, good. Run the test. Again, we're still doing the same pickup test. We have a value. We start below the value, min and max. We're getting to the actual value when the relay operates. We get the green light. We're good. Now we need to go to the next test. 51 in one timing. Right? We have a curve associated with it and a value. So again, binary input. All right, we're good there. Binary input. Now I need to go to the relay. Set space out uh, L. Yeah, see. We all try our best. We didn't remember that. Nobody from the audience helped me out, so I, that's how we do it. Fifty-one M1T. All right. Out 201, looks good to me, yes. All right, magic response, ah, setting saved, love it. Come in here, hit play. All right, so we're gonna get a few times on our neutral, right? All right, everything looks good. Awesome, so where do I wanna go from here? Well, I've already made the connection change uh, a little sooner than I thought I would, but it's okay because I want to utilize the connection change that I've already made. So I've already put current into the neutral CT input of the relay. So what I want to do now is use it. So I'm going to come back. I want to go into the instantaneous. 
right? Because it's only going you know, to use the same CT uh, input that I have already, I'm already hooked up to. So 50 in one P is going to be five amps. All right. So let's go to this guy. Let's create the test for it. All right. Again, we're coming in here. We're going to go number of elements. We're going to add. Now we're going to four, right? So E4 for element four. I'm going to change that name. 50 in one. 50 in one. Still on the still on neutral CT, right? Uh, and we're going to change the way we do this bottom half. Okay. So what did we do? This is very this is very good to pay attention to here because when you go to 51 elements and you're doing those pickups here, your pickup value is going to be this first box. When you do a 50 element, that's an instantaneous. Okay? So instantaneous goes in the instantaneous setting. Right? Don't put the setting in here in your pickup for an instantaneous element. It's an instantaneous setting. Five. Right? Where did I get the five? Back here. 50 in 1P is five. All right. So we want to make sure we put the instantaneous value here. We don't care about the time down pickup because we're not using the time element. So we can take those out. Uh, actually, it'll be zero. Zero. Okay. Do we need a curve? No. We don't need a curve because it's 50 element. It has no curve, right? So we'll do in. We put our correct instantaneous value, uh, setting value here, 50 element, good to go. We're going to come into the change in the test and look what happened. Wow, I got some tests populated for me. Isn't that nice? So, what is the difference between all these tests? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, in the pickup, when we were creating, the instantane or creating the time uh, elements, we placed a value that was in the pickup and the time dial setting. And when you do, it creates a, uh, a couple of tests for the pickup and the timing. Any time that you create an element and add an element to the list, the software is automatically going to create these two these two tests. It's an automatic. Do I need to use the tests? No. You do not have to utilize these tests. They're there for you to use or not use, depending on what your uh, element or how you want to, uh, you know, what you're testing, basically. So now I only put a value in the instantaneous. So when the instantaneous saw the five amps go in there, it gave me a test. That's the test I want to use. Why? There is a difference between the way the pickup test and the instantaneous works. The pickup test is a ramp test. So anytime you have a, um, anytime that you have an instantaneous test, you don't want to ramp it. You want to pulse it. It's a pulse ramp. So that will be a difference. If you ran this test here, it's going to run it. One, it won't have any setting in it. So it's just going to sit there and run. Two, it's going to be a ramp test, a step ramp. This is instantaneous, going to be a pulse. So I want to select this guy. Now I know that my instantaneous is going to be the instantaneous style ramp, right? Which is correct. Same unit. Make sure binary input is good. Yep, everything looks great. And I need to go talk to the relay. So got to go back to the relay and set space L out 107. Terse, terser. That'll work too. And I need uh, 50 in one. All right, out 201 is there. We're looking good here. I know this looks like it's getting monotonous, but you know, you'd be surprised. You'll come in here and you'll fat finger one of these guys or you get the wrong element. And I mean, it happens. You're sitting here all day. That's where that lunch will come in handy. Um, so now that I'm ready to go, I've talked to the relay. Everything's good. I'm still connected to my NCT. I'm going to hit play. I only get one phase, it's only one input. And we're going to wait for the five amps or whenever the relay decides to operate. Okay, it's a little over. That's all right. It falls within our guidelines. We're getting a green check. Okay, so next one. 
element we need to do here is we need to go to the relay and we're going to do the uh, phase instantaneous. And the phase instantaneous is going to be the 50P1P, right? But what do we say? It's probably going to be this 50P1, right, for the element name. So I'm going to create a test, name it 50P1, and that the value is 30. So we're going to come back to the test. I need to add a test. I got four here already. I need to add five. It's going to toss the fifth one on here. All right, rename 50P1. Great. Uh, I'm going to do all three phases because it is a phase element. But since I've been down here and I was noticing that I wasn't going to select this in, that just keyed me to and reminded me because it will happen while you're out in the field to change your connection. Changing my connection back to A phase, B phase, and C phase of the relay. All right. And now, again, remember I said you don't need to put any value here no value because we're not doing a pickup we're doing an instantaneous right so that instantaneous value is 30. no time dial we're not putting any curve information in here because we don't need it right we're just doing this pickup test here right so everything looks good 50 p1 we're going to do all three phases 30 amps let's go we're going to select what test select the test for the uh this guy 50 p1 instantaneous He's the instantaneous test, right? Come in binary input, ah, binary input one, everything is good. All right, now I need to go talk to that relay again. I mean, that relay is going to have some words. All right, so set L space out 107 space terse. And now we're going to do a 50 P1. I see out 201. That lets me know that we're good. Setting saved, done, run the test. Let's run all the phases. Let's just do it. All right. So again, same thing. We are pulsing this test. Each time this increments, it's pulsing. You know, on, off, on, increment, on, off, increment, on, off, so forth. And then just continue doing that process until the relay has been completely tested or uh, sometimes you might get a no operation, and again, that could come from you not changing your leads if you were following exactly how I was going and jumping back and forth between the neutral CT and the phase CT. So 50p1 instantaneous, we got some good values here. I like it. Again, like I was showing earlier, if I go to the T, all these tests I just start, I just added the in pickups for the neutrals, the times, instantaneous, all these tests are inputted into this template. So later on, when I hit save, I'm going to save this as a template. And then now I don't have to do, I don't have to go through this again. All I do is just go into each individual test and change the values. Done. I don't have to mess with the naming. I don't have to mess with any anything else. I can, and also I could take this and pass it off to other technicians that might be going to the same location that I have built this from. So there's a lot of flexibility in these test templates. Okay. So now that I have the instantaneous value, uh, we need to do one more. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the uh, residual crown instantaneous for the 50G1P. Okay, and it's a setting of one. So now we're going to come in, add a test, and add the elements to six. We're going to get an extra element, E6. We're going to take all these defaults off. I'm going to rename this guy. Let's rename him 50G1. Okay, it's going to do all three phases. Now, I don't need anything else down here, but the instantaneous value, which is going to be one. I know it's so small. Still put it in the instantaneous. Don't come over here and add it to the pickup um, because it's still in a 50 element. And a good rule to, to go by is all instantaneous elements, 50 elements, need to have pulse ramps. 
If you stick with that, then all the time, everything that you test will be consistent because you know you're going to be on the same page. Um, hit OK. We're going to come in and do, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm jumping ahead of myself. We need to change the test. We come down here to the 50G instantaneous test. I need to come in and check my binary input. All right, everything looks good. And I need to go talk to the relay. All right. We're going to set space L, space out, 107, space terse. Uh, this is a 50G1 element. Yes, yes, end, yes. Settings saved, good, hit OK. I'm going to do all the phases. Well, came a little bit under there. All right. And you noticing we're still we're we're doing the ramp here, but you'll notice your test set is still doing a pulse action. It's still doing a pulse. It got pulses on, off, on, off at every increment. Okay, we got values here. All right. So what do we need uh, in this test? We have done overcurrent tests. We have completed the 51p1 pickup and time, the g in time for ground. We have done the neutral uh, CT, the extra add-on that's on the uh, on this particular relay. We've done the instantaneous pickup for the 50 uh, neutral, uh, the phase, and the ground. So this is a lot of tests. We've done a lot of these tests in in almost two hours, almost an hour. So that's quite a bit of tests. Um, and two, you don't have to redo these tests again, right? Because once I get this, I'm just going to save it. I'm going to save the template and I'll show you how to do that. I'll show, I'll, we'll do that in. So the other couple elements I do want to go over uh, while we're here is the uh, accelerate uh, voltage elements. Okay. So we went through the in, the phase uh, instantaneous uh, or the, any, all three of the instantaneouses and the times. We're going to move down to the voltage elements and then we're going to jump down to the frequency elements as well. Okay. So in the voltage, we, we're looking at in the voltage elements is this value here. Why am I doing the voltage element, right? Well, one is because I set it because I would like to show you how we can do the testing, whether it be overcurrents, voltages, frequencies, kind of giving you a little bit of a wide gamma here on, on what to look at. Two, it doesn't take a lot of effort, uh, a, a, I say effort, but a lot of time uh, to set these tests up. And uh, it's we just put a few clicks of a button and a little bit of adding some settings. We're doing this in a short amount of time. So we're actually really quick with this. Uh, and I've almost got half the relay tested. Um, most of the relays are, 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 are overcurrent based for the most part. A lot of them have a bunch of overcurrents in there is the majority of the relay. So we're going to do this element um, and I'm going to do one over uh, voltage as well. So I'm going to have an under voltage and a oh under voltage over voltage situation so i'm going to do a 27 p 1 p and it's going to be 50 right 50 volts so let's go to the test i cannot use this test okay and the reason why is because this is only for current this has embedded curves in it for the time current curves for over current protection Right, so this only drives current from my test set. I need to drive voltage now, so I need to go to a different test. So I don't want you to get confused that I need to add another element here. Why can't I add an element here and then start doing my uh, 27 element in this guy? Well, it's not going to work because the 27 takes voltage, um, and the other one does not, and that's why we cannot do it in here. I'm not even going to entertain that. Let's just go back. Okay. So I'm going to get out of this, go back to the home screen. Right. I'm going to use another feature we have. It's right next to it. Right. Here's over voltage and here's under voltage. Well, the first one I'm going to do is under voltage 27. So we're going to select it. What do I want to do? No electromechanical, right? No, we're microprocessor here. I'm going to do a pickup. There's really no instantaneous for the voltage on this particular unit because it's not electromechanical base, right? And, so, and some 
elements, yes, I agree, there are some instantaneouses for voltages as well. This particular scenario, we're not using it. So we're just gonna do the include on pickup test. We're gonna make sure our tolerances are still okay, right? And we're gonna need to change a few things here. So I'm gonna need to change this pre-fault voltage, right? Because in the over voltage situation, you're going from a um, open state, or a it's open contact, but basically what in the voltage, it's an under voltage condition. If I'm at a nominal voltage of say, uh, here in the States is usually 66, uh, uh, 0.4 for 115 or you can do the 120 volt whatever it is that's going to be under voltage condition will be under that right so we got to run our tests that way so this value just says we have a default value in here of 69 volts right i want to make it more close to, i want to make this value the same as what the relay it actually has in it so we're going to come back to the relay and we're going to go up here to general settings in the top and I'm going to select, I'm going to come down here to VNOM for voltage, nominal voltage here. And that's a 66.4 for the secondary side, right? Line to neutral. So that's the value I want to use. So I'm going to come back to here, and I want to do 66.4. Zero. Done. I want this pre-fault to happen for a second. You can extend it. Uh, I would suggest leaving a little bit of pre-fault in here so it gives your relay enough time to reset itself to normal condition before you put the fault uh, uh, values on it. Okay, so we're good here. Now, again, we're going to take off all these defaulted items. Under voltage, yeah, that looks good, but eh, I want to be more specific. 27. Oh, you're going to love this. A1. Those of you who are not familiar with uh, SCL relay, is it's not going to be a 27P1. It's not going to be any other value, but specifically tied to each individual phase. And so in the voltage elements, you get a 27A1 for A phase, 27B1 for B phase, and a 27C1 for C phase. Or you could end up with a phase-to-phase -phase element as well that could be this is a to b b to c c to a okay so there's different you need to really look at the manual for these guys uh because they are in there uh they're under the voltage elements and they'll explain to you what these actual elements are i remember i was saying this 27 p1p is just a it's like it's uh the the main element and then it has sub elements underneath it so this one is going to be for today it's just going to be for a phase is all we're testing is 27 a1 right for this for the first level as well right uh 27 a2 be second level right okay so let's go here and now we need to select a phase because we're doing a element right and what we're going to do is we also need to put the value in here the pickup value so to pick up value back to my voltage elements was 50 as you can see here so now i need to change this to 50. time dial i don't need a time dial why because i'm not doing a time i'm doing a pickup well i'm in the timing screen well i get that but if you go to the tolerance you notice that i checked include pickup test so I can use what test I want to out of here. I don't have to use them all. And okay, A phase, I'm doing the 27 A1 element. I put 50 in here. I don't need any of the curve information, as does not apply to me. And okay, 27 A1 pickup, right? And then also I need to check binary input. Yep, everything looks good there. Still the same. Up, oh, need to go talk to the relay. So let's go talk to the relay. Relay says set, space out, 104. Terse. All right, this is going to be 27 alpha 1. Right? I get the out 201. That tells me this element name is good. Yes. Wait for the magic response. There we go. 
Now I can run the test. You'll notice here under voltage, it actually pre-faulted a voltage of 66.4, took one voltage channel and was decreasing the voltage until this contact on the relay actually closed. Okay, so we started from a normal condition of the 66.4 that we saw in BNOM in the relay settings. We de started decreasing that value until we got to the setting value or within the tolerance, the plus or minus of the 5% that we had set earlier, right? So this is what we're gonna be looking for. This relay actually operated uh, spot on, so we're good there. And we have A phase. If you want to wish to do this for B phase, you can create another test out of here by just simply coming up to the relay settings, coming into elements, hitting element number two, select two, Go in and change this to 27 Bravo 1. And then now I will need to change this pickup value, right, to whatever that value is for 27B1. Uh, we can probably do the same. I bet this would. Uh, no, because I don't have the, the actual setting piece in here. So if you change this, you'll put the setting in here and then you'll take off this guy. Take off all defaults. Uh, will not be one, it'll be two. Uh, he might go. Let's try this. Let's go. I need to select the test. Pick up. We're going to binary input number one. Uh, everything looks good. Set the relay. All right, this is going to be 27 Bravo 1. Wait for the response for back from the relay. Awesome. Run the test. Yep, we're running B phase. We're decreasing the value again, as you're seeing here, until it gets to the value uh, in the setting. Oh, and it's spot on too. So that's how you would create not only the first one, but also using the second one for A, B, and then you would create another one for, for C phase here, um, all by selecting it and just adding them to them, okay? So that's how you would continue on with this process. And if you wanted to do phase to phase, you could do the same, add number of elements, and then do the phase to phase piece uh, by selecting the phase to phase button that you're gonna see here, right? A to B, B to C, C to A, okay? So now that's, the second to last element I want to go over is, where's that? Uh, Z over voltage, right? So 59P1. And we're going to go uh, this test. Remember, I went in here as an under voltage test. So the next one we need is an over voltage test. So I have to come back to the beginning, timing screen, over voltage now. We were just in the under voltage. So now we're going over, no instantaneous. We want to check, make sure that our uh, tolerances are still good. Pre-fault, uh, the voltage is off. Remember, VNOM was 66.4. We'll make sure that matches, right? And then we'll leave it on for one second. We're doing a check mark and we're gonna default Take all the defaults off. Over voltage, we want to change this name to 59. Oh, don't love this. A1. It's very similar to the 27. Okay, A1, we're going to select the A phase because that's the element that we chose to label here. And then now we need a pickup value. Well, what was that pickup value? Well, before when I looked at it, it was actually 100, right? So it's 100 volts. We're going to come back 100 no time dial I don't care about that we're just doing a pickup test and we don't care about the curve because we're doing a pickup test right so let's come in 59 1 59 alpha 1 pickup binary input yeah same binary input uh, sorry we need to come talk to the relay all right that's 
space L space L one oh seven spurs. All right, fifty nine alpha one. That won't work. That will. Okay. Yes. Waiting for the response. All right. Saved. Now we're going to run the test. And you notice that our setting is at 100, min and max 5%, and then we're increasing the value till we get to a setting or somewhere within tolerance would be great. If not, then the relay would either operate outside of that, giving us no to an outer tolerance uh, result or a no operation. So now that we've actually um, got a response, it's 100.667 and we can do the same thing here as we did before in the under voltage side so we can add another element if we wish to do 59 beat bravo one or charlie so we can just add a couple elements again rename and do this whole process all over again if we wish to all right that's how you can add elements to your test Right. So basically in this one test platform here, this one test template, you're actually or test feature, I should say, you could actually put in a uh, multiple of 10 different elements in here. So you can run 10 different tests just from this same screen. Um, so that's really neat because we're not having to jump back and forth everywhere. All right. So now the next one, the, the final um, element we're going to do is the frequency so we're going to come back to the frequency frequency elements now I have two set in here uh, one I set on purpose for under frequency 59.5 the second one I set for over frequency for the 61 uh, 61 Hertz I did give a time delay right so I gave some time delays in there to run a pickup and a timing test on this particular relay right so that's why I do have two of these set. So the first one, 81D1P, which actually the element's going to be, if I cover that up with my little arrow, it's going to be 81D1, delta 1. Okay. So 59.5, 10. Let's come back. Now I need, I'm on the home screen. I still have all my tests that I did in my overcurrent. I select over under voltage. Look what I got. I got under voltage test here, the pickups I did. Over voltage, oh, I got over, over voltage tests I pick, I uh, uh, performed here too. I don't have the 59 Bravo 1 that I labeled because it didn't run the test. So when you're seeing, oh, well, he, he wrote the 59B1 on there, but you have to physically run the test, right? And once you run the test, then the test actually gets populated in my test template, right? Because if I did, if I went in there and always just added information into a test and never ran the test, and I would have these things populating everywhere and it, and it would be so confusing. So that's the reason why you don't see the 59 Bravo one test in here. We'll come in. We're going to select the frequency element, right? If you do not have this feature, um, it is OK. We can work around uh, running this test using our ramp screen. You can always do the ramp function and ramp a frequency. Um, you can also uh, use this home screen, which will be the screen that's behind here, actually, to perform your ramp manually as well. Or if you want to do a time, you can do pre-fault fault and capture the time here if you're setting your frequencies up uh, for something other than uh, the fault, uh, say 59.4, right? It's got to get over the, the pickup value. And then you can go pre fault to fault and capture that time here as well. Also, you can ramp this channel for your pickup, um, wherever that pickup might be or whatever that set point is. So there are a couple different other ways to do this. Um, and we do have some uh, good information. Uh, I would I would uh, uh, point you over to the uh, YouTube Mega YouTube channel. We've got lots of good videos that we're putting out that shows how to do a lot of these features and these ramp. Uh, uh, the ramps from home screen and so forth but this little frequency thing is pretty nice so what we want to do is I'm taking off the uh, default ones I do not have the um, uh, change in frequency over time and the Rokoff option here so I'm deleting or not deleting it but 
uh, in, uh, not enabling it. And then what we want to do is we have a section for under, right? We have a section for o oh, a section for over. So this I can perform under frequency, over frequency in the same test plan again, just as I did before. Okay. So now we need the setting. The setting was 59.5, right? From the accelerator screen. Also need this in two cycles. This needs to be 10 cycles. Where did I get that from? Well, I got it from the setting here, 59.5, and then also the 10 cycles. Okay. So now I'm going to go uh, over. Over is 61. Let's just put in all the settings while we're here. Uh, I believe the 12 is fine. Uh, we will go back. 12. Excuse me. And the uh, eight, the uh, over frequency is 61. So we're good there. 61, 12, 59, 5, 10. Let's do this. All right. Most of the uh, default settings in here are, are great. Uh, we don't have to change a lot of these. So uh, you can just go with it. Now, as long as we're uh, within your tolerances, again, like I said, make sure that you uh, are, are up on the manufacturer's manual. Make sure that you uh, set your tolerance levels, uh, how, what is recommended in the manuals, so that way uh, you keep everything organized and everything is uh, standard. So now we're in the under frequency pickup test. Where do I get these tests? I get the same icon, so I get the under frequency pickup that was generated, the timing, over frequency pickup, over frequency timing. Okay. So what I want to do is the first one, under frequency time. So, or uh, pickup, sorry, under frequency pickup. And then now I want to, uh, well, one, I got to talk to the relay. So let's talk to this guy. Set space out 107. I know I messed that up eventually. Terse. Okay, so out 107, what am I doing now? I'm doing the under frequency, and what I said earlier was 81D1, delta 1 was going to be my under frequency element. So 81D1 is my pickup, right? I see out 201 here, so we're good. In, save, wait for the response. Yep, we're good. Come in here. Now I want to run this test. I'm going to run the pickup test. As you see up here in the icon, okay. And you're going to notice these values are going to be changing here. This is what the test set is outputting um, for this specific test, okay. Um, one thing I did not uh, change was my voltage, right? And I just saw that when I was in here. So it happens, you know, you might come through here and, and use defaults at 69. Um, it isn't going to hurt it too bad, but uh, actually it's not going to hurt it at all. But if you just want to make it to where everything looks right, we can do this 66.4, just like what's said in the relay. So what I'll do is I'll rerun this test. So now my values of 66.4 are correct. Right? Run this test again. And now you're going to see these value here decrease until the relay picks up. Relay picked up at 59.5. Here's my min and max values. Here's my setting value. And we were within the specs. So we're actually getting a green light. Right. So now we'll go on to the test under frequency timing. Under frequency timing, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to take my value and drop it below. So the test value is actually going to be populated for us. The 59.25 is going to be a little bit below the 59.5. Right. So we can actually get below the pickup value as soon as the test starts we're actually uh, starting the timer expected trip time is 10 and then we have the uh, plus or minus ready oh yeah look see i almost forgot we gotta go talk to the relay let's talk to this guy all right set space out 107 space terse we need that delay right so 81 d1 is a pickup value i need 81 81 D1T for time. That's what I need. I need this time. 
Okay, I get out 201. Awesome. End. Yes. Wait for the response. Saved. Ready to go. Let's do this. Ready. Say go. Oh, uh, do I want to run the test? Yep. Let's do it. Okay, so we waited for the test. The test actually went from 60 hertz and dropped all the way down to 59.25. It went straight from <laughs> the 60 all the way down to, to uh, 59.25 and it operated during this time delay here. So, and that's the time that we got for the trip time and the minimax tolerances and we're getting a green light. So we're within range of where we need to be and uh, everything looks good. So now I'm gonna go to over frequency, right? Over frequency. Now we gotta go up. So now our frequency expected is gonna be 61 instead of 60, right? So now I need to go to talk to the relay. All right, set, space L, space L, seven. First, ooh, almost ended that. Okay, so 81 D1, T for time. Now remember I said that the when you look at this guy, he's my over voltage or over frequency uh, element that I set in here for 61. So now he's 81 D2, and that's what I need to put here. 81 D2 for that pickup. Got 201. Yes. Wait for the response. Everything's saved. We're good. Run the test. Yep, looks good. Let's run it. All right, so we actually got a pickup now. So as we were increasing these values here, the relay picked up, and then it picked up at 61.07 hertz. We got a green check. We're within tolerance. Life is good. Now we're going to go to the timing, over frequency timing. And yeah, it's this frequency screen switches so quickly between that I don't have to add these elements, and I, it just makes me want to just hit the test every time. Um, I always forget that I gotta go talk to the relay. So I go talk to the relay, say hey, uh, set L space out 107 terse. And again, this is going to be 81 delta 2t, right? So the t's for the time, what I need. Uh, end, yes. Wait for the response. Okay, setting save. All right, now we're going to run the test. Run this test, yep. Let's do it. Okay, we're running tests. All right, so we got a our visual graph here. So again, you're seeing the same graph going in a different direction because we start out at the 60, uh, pretty much on the horizontal line, and go up to 61.2, which is, or 0.25 actually, it's a little bit above that. And this is the value that we were outputting, so we make sure that we're over the pickup value, right? Uh, everything looked good, trip times are good, everything came in, so we're done, right? So what do we want to do at this point? So let's say we are fully complete. We're complete with the test. We're done with everything that we want to do. And uh, we're fixing to get ready to go home. Or uh, this is a template that we created and we want to save it and hang on to it, right? So in the end, we want to always save our work, right? Because it's always a, a bad thing if you don't have your work to prove that you were there. So we have, we'll go back over this. We have overcurrent. Right, so we have all the overcurrent elements that we have uh, picked today that we have tested 51 P1s, the G1s, pickup timing, uh, neutral pickup timing, instantaneous neutral phase ground, under voltage element. We went ahead and did the second phase here, that's why it's populated for under voltage. Over voltage, you only got one phase uh, because we did not run the second one that we populated. Frequency. We have our settings. We also have the free under frequency pickup timing, over frequency pickup, over frequency timing. Okay, 
So we have all these tests. We performed all these tests. We want to use these tests. First thing I want to do is go look at the report. Okay. So we're going to go to report, view report. It's going to take it a minute to generate all of the information. Okay. So this is going to be the uh, power to be report. And we got the 51 P1 pickup, right? We have all the information here. Everything looks good. Go to the second one. We have our time current curve tests. These are going to look good as well. Our pickups. So everything's looking nice. Good, good. Uh, for our neutrals, instantaneous values, pickup value. All of our instantaneouses. We're getting the settings as well. For the under voltage, under voltage test is looking good. Here's our over, over voltage test. We also have our frequency. It applies our settings in here as well. And then we get the nice little graph for the under frequency pickup and the timing. Here's our timing graph as well. It's really nice to have over frequency pickup, over frequency timing. So everything looks looks good okay so now that I have this I go home and I want to save now two ways to do this one is come in on PC and hit save right we want to save you're going to save as so you can have all your results and everything that you tested today save as give it a station name give it a number whatever this customer is that's what you want to use right somewhere you can keep up with it the other one is save as a template okay we want to do this as well why do i want to do this because i don't want to redo this work i don't want to have to go through and build all this again we just did it so save it as a template name it off as a template 351 template uh, and you give that to anyone else that's testing with you it, it, you could save it to a thumb drive. You can pass in an email. It gets saved as a PDB XML file. Uh, it's really easy to use. All you got to do is just load it. That's it. Um, trying to make this as easy for you, for everyone as possible. And all you got to do is just a few clicks. Um, so the second option is if you have the handheld STVI. So if you have the handheld STVI, you're going to see a a uh, a button looks like this it's going to have a folder in it okay in this folder is going to have when you select it it's going to bring you to a screen that allows you to save your test results it also allow you to save as a PDF file as well so you want to make sure that you have your PDF file you want to make sure that um, uh, you want to make sure that you have your uh, PDF file, your template saved. You want to make sure everything else in here is saved. Um, and it will save it on the STVI itself. Okay. When it saves it, it's still in PDB XML format. And then also, when it goes through, uh, you can uh, thumb drive it over to your PC and run it on the PC and vice versa. So if you actually create this template in here, you can move it over and, and put it in the STVI, right, and run it. So you got two different ways to do this. Um, if, uh, like I was saying earlier, quickly, is that if you uh, do not have this frequency uh, element available to you, uh, you can definitely let us know because this, all these, uh, uh, when you get the enhanced side, you actually have all these tools available to you, not just the individual ones. I use this one because it's so easy to use, um, and it also gives me a nice graph and a nice report. Um, otherwise, you can come over here and use the ramp screen. And in Sagosha's uh, webinar, he did a few weeks back, and you can go back to our Mega website and see those videos. He walked through the ramp screen and how to perform a, a ramp test. Now, when you do the ramp, you would just select amplitude, and then I would come down and do the voltage frequency. So now I could change this frequency value and ramp these frequencies. So there's still two different ways to get um, the frequency tests completed. 
but this module makes it really nice as you've seen so uh, you do have to have quite a few more steps if you're going down the ramp option okay so now uh, I think we're running close out of time let me uh, uh, let's go back to this guy thing didn't work out for me for a second okay so uh, a little summary um, one is we want to make sure that we verify job tax to, to perform right we want to conversate with a customer we want to know what they want to test we want to know what they don't want to test we want to know how they want to test make sure that you guys are on the same page because you don't want to have to redo the work right uh, verify relay settings are up to date <laughs> make sure that you actually have settings uh, in the relay and two if they're going to make any relay if they've done load studies and want to do any type of changes we want to make sure that we capture those and do them uh, apply them to the relay while you're there doing the test you're already there um, tools needed uh, of course SMRT you need that one uh, PC with RTMS is helpful if not use STVI make sure you have all the proper cables make sure you have all your proper equipment before you leave to go on location because it is not good to have your head hanging down when you have to go pick up something that you forgot that should have been in your in your toolkit or in your test kit okay uh, here where I we showed to isolating and masking the proper elements and names when I was showing you that there could be a different name for a different element that's what you need to take care of uh, or just be pay close attention to because just because you're in there trying to do a 51P1P element doesn't mean that the element's going to work that way. It's going to constantly throw back an error message at you because the actual element name is 50P1. So all the manuals have all the documentation in them. I would put that as part of one of your job tasks is to make sure that you have the relay uh, documentation before you even show up on location because you need to know what you're testing. Uh, and two, you might have a question later. Uh, do the work once. Um, I am a big proponent of doing the work one time, not having to go back and be part of the redo crew. Um, but um, what's really nice is you can do the tests like I was showing you. Do the tests once. At least get them in the test list. And then if you need to, you can always go back and tweak those tests. It's in your template. Save it as a template. Go back, retweak the test. And every time that you're going to come across another 351 relay at that location or some other location, you're going to be you're going to tweak the test every time. Uh, I have not come across one test yet in my career that I have, haven't had to tweak, even though I thought it was solid. And so every test needs a little tweaking. Uh, report and template saving. So we got to see that the report is is what everybody gets paid on. I mean. That report is not only if you are a testing company, but even if you owned your equipment, um, that report is gold. Um, it's probably worth more than gold, um, but you want to make sure that your reports are clean. You want to make sure they look good. You want to make sure that everything that you're naming in your test is uniform. Don't just name a bunch of tests, a bunch, you know, whatever you feel like you want to name it that day. Make sure they make sense uh, because whoever you give that report to, has to be able to decipher that. If you have to go back to the report to explain it to a customer, then you didn't do your job well because the problem is, is that you need to make sure everything is clear. And it, it just kind of helps, uh, again, with that whole time uh, that we were saying in the beginning. Let's make sure that we, you know, uh, utilize our time as we can. And two, the template saving, you know, save the templates, do whatever you need to do. Uh, pass them to your friend, you know, to other coworkers. Pass them to to people that uh, can use them. Use those templates later, and and add to them. So you can always do that as well. I probably talked more than I needed to, but I really enjoy doing the testing, uh, especially for uh, element based testing. I like doing testing on relays and using the software and getting to know it. So you guys have any questions we have uh, information here that you can get a hold of us and I think uh, Mr. Mike is taking it from here I appreciate everybody listening and thank you for your time
All right, thank you, David. Uh, so, as mentioned, at this time, the presentation portion of our webinar is officially concluded. We'll now take some time to answer as many of your questions as possible. If you have any questions, please submit them now into the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. For those of you that are leaving, when you close the webinar window, a survey should pop up on the screen. We would greatly appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes to provide your feedback so we can continue to improve upon future webinars. On the survey, there's a field where you can also request a demo or a quote on any mega products. A copy of this presentation, certificate of attendance, and a link to the video recording of the webinar will be emailed to everyone in about two business days. You can also view video recordings of previous webinars as well as register for upcoming webinars on our website at us.megar.com webinars and register for our next webinar, How to Perform Primary Injection Testing with Megar Spy Instruments. The presenter will be Daniel Carreño. All right, let's jump into some questions. Our first one I'm going to be sending over to Sugosh. Sugosh, can I choose a different set of output contacts for pickup and timing tests on the timing screen? Uh, the answer is yes. So, so when we are using the timing screen, uh, once you enter the relay information, the tolerances, the settings, you know, the pickup time dial and instantaneous and all that good information, uh, the timing screen is going to create uh, the, all those tests that David just showed you today. The, the pickup test, the timing test, the instantaneous test, all of them in the same same screens. So what you could do is uh, you could you could choose three spare contacts in this example, say out one out uh, 201, 202, and 203 in, in, in this example, and then you can use uh, map them to the respective binaries on the test set. Let's say binary input number one, two, and three are mapped to those respective uh, output contacts on the relay. And you can choose individual outputs for, uh, for each of these tests on the respective screens. And uh, what this would do is uh, it would save you some time, uh, like how David was uh, showing you how you would go into the relay software and map the output contacts for the element you're testing. You would then perform the mapping once for all those three output contacts at the same time. And once you finish that mapping, you could come back to these respective screens and then perform these tests one after the other. So you're you're not going back and forth in between and you're able to use different set of contacts for each of these tests. And let us say at a later point of time, uh, let's say you're working on a different set of uh, same model relay, uh, you would want to choose a specific contact for all these relays, all these uh, tests. So like, like how David is showing, that's the place where you would go in and choose a particular contact. And underneath there, it also has an option uh, which says this test or all the tests in this timing screen. So, so this gives you the flexibility to choose the different set of contacts for each test. All right, thank you, Sagosh. Um, Abel, can I test a ground element without tripping the phase element? Um, uh, David, if you were kind enough to go to the settings uh, screen here on the, yeah, there. And uh, yeah, the, the answer, the short answer is yes, you can do it. You can use this uh, feature that David is pointing to that's called a use phase compensation. So what happens here is that you can, um, two things. One is that you can test the phase element without tripping the ground. Um, in this case, what it does is it will inject a, a current in one phase and then it will inject uh, equal but opposite currents in the other two phases so that you don't have um, enough current to trip the ground element. And um, I guess that would be the, um, the answer to, to the question. You, you have to use this uh, use phase compensation to, uh, to achieve that. Um, that goal. You can, of course, do it yourself in the home screen and whatnot, but that would mean that you have to do the calculations and compensation yourself. This way, the software does it for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sugosh, could I change the ramping interval for a pickup test? Uh, yes, you can uh, change the, the interval uh, from the ramp control screens. So, uh, David earlier spoke about uh, simple ramp screens, uh, you know, to, as an example, to perform a frequency test. So you could, you have a good control on the ramping intervals on the simple ramp or the advanced ramp, you know, the type of ramp you're choosing. So in here, uh, 
like like how David is pointing out, the characteristics are shown on the right side of the type of ramp you're, you've chosen. And then there is an increment field, which is pointing to uh, 0 0.01 hertz in this example. So so that is the, your ramp rate or the, you know, ramp rate. And the, the 200 milliseconds is your interval for each ramp, which is the dwell time. So, so here you can control the ramp rate. Now, you, depending on what kind of uh, a ramp option you choose, like for pulse ramp, you know, the characteristic would change, but the idea is same. You have the option to uh, control the parameters of these kind of ramps. All right, thank you. Um, Abel, when adding elements in RTMS, will it override the test if one adds an element to a test that had already been performed? Um, no, the uh, adding elements the, doesn't override uh, tests that had already been performed. The only thing that can override a test is doing the test again. So uh, if you want to uh, change the results in a test, you have to perform that test again, but you have to be specific. You have to do it on that test. What you can do sometimes is you can perform a test and then copy that test and perform a new test based on the one that you just performed. Uh, that's done very easily once you have the, uh, uh, David, I don't know if you can go to the, uh, lightning bolt control there and show them all the all the tests that we have there. Uh, when you have uh, any of these tests, what you can do is you can uh, select one of them and uh, copy them and uh, you know uh, uh, create a new. You can duplicate it, for example, or you can uh, copy it and things like that. But that will not override the results of that uh, particular test. The only thing that can override a test if you, if you perform or run that test again, okay? All right, um, David, why did you choose to perform element tests for elements not being utilized in the trip equation? Well, because in the, it, it's a good question and I, I knew this was gonna come up actually because when we do this, uh, this style of webinar, um, I wanted to kind of, and maybe it made a little confusion uh, between what we were, what I was trying to accomplish between talking about the trip logic equations and the elements. Um, but in this uh, section, I wanted to demonstrate how to walk through and test elements by taking the element out, masking it, and then doing the test in RTMS and then placing it back you know, and, and selecting a different unit. It's almost like checking a book out of the library, right? So I didn't choose to do logic testing in here because a lot, the majority of people we get questions on are element testing, how are you guys doing this? You know, what's happening here? So, but it does make sense for, a, you know, later on down the road, uh, we might be able to get into a, a trip equation kind of scenario and walk down that path. I, I did not mean to muddy the water a little bit when I was coming through here to uh, talk about the actual trip equation that's that I was looking at for this particular trip. I was just trying to give a little explanation that there's multiple ways that you could actually per, uh, look at testing, right? We could look at it logically. We could look at it. Uh, some people just element test just because maybe we're doing it on a bench and you want to create uh, a full relay test plan, you would have to go through there and test every element. So it's just kind of a, a we can add that to, to another webinar. Uh, it's just kind of giving a little bit of an explanation here and our main focus was to just do element testing. All right, thank you. Um, Sugosh. Can we do high set instantaneous testing using smart 46D test kits? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, SMRT 46D or any any other mo models, uh, pretty much all of them uses uh, pretty much same kind of Vigens except a couple of the models in the SMRT family. But uh, yes, the answer is yes, you can perform the high set instantaneous testing. So in the timing screen, when uh, David uh, was showing uh, where you can enter the instantaneous setting and the pickup. There's also a field for the second instantaneous. So you could enter your low set and high set instantaneous settings in here 
and then based on what you enter here uh, those tests uh, for instantaneous number one, which is the low set, and the high set instantaneous tests will be created in the list of tests, and then you could perform the tests from there, like how David is showing here on the screen. Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of tests here, but uh, the test should be shown on the test list. There you go. So, so it shows you the, the low set and the high set under the same uh, test screen. So you'll be able to test both of them. Thank you, David. Yeah, no problem. All right. Yeah. Uh, so David, how do I add a time current curve if I don't see that in the list? Okay. Uh, there's two ways. Um, one is uh, if you don't see a time current curve in the list, then what we can do is you can send us the information, the curve sheet, uh, it, it's, or, or um, digitized curve uh, information, something we, we would have to verify uh, when you're sending it to us or PowerDB to place into our TMS software. We need to have all the information and then we have to verify it, make sure it's accurate as well. Uh, we don't just want to put a bunch of curves and a bunch of information in here. Uh, we want to make sure everything is clean and two that you won't be the only one that might be using it so we will definitely want to make sure um, we have everything that we can for that send it to us um, you can send it to us on our email addresses you can send it to PowerDB uh, to be placed in our TMS um, also if you are an AVT or uh, uh, PowerDB Pro user uh, you can create uh, the curve using ParityB Pro, and you can import it into the RTMS list here into this curve library. So once you create it in Pro, we can come down uh, and you can actually uh, import it into the curve features, uh, this curve uh, feature. Yeah, let's go down to, let's say, SEL. Let's just show it. Real quick. So the information that you're going to see in here is if we're doing the U3, right? So this will be the curve information that you'll see here. When you get in ParityB Pro, you can actually create this curve and then we can import it into here and it'll be a next line item uh, underneath. And then what we're going to do is validate that the, the uh, equation or the points are on the actual line according to the documentation and then that's it. So we can actually send you this file to import as well. All right, good deal. Sorry. Uh, Sugosh, does the max and min in software mean pickup and drop off value? Uh, no, those figures does not mean they are pickup and drop off. So um, at the first in the first screen, after navigating to the timing screen uh, from the list of features we have in the first screen, which is the tolerance screen, uh, that you know we enter all the tolerances, right? The minimum and maximum, and and those are what are displayed in the in the test screen as well in the table as min and max. Those represent the tolerances for your pickup. Uh, let's say if it's for a timing test, uh, those percentage tolerances. Are, are for the time current curve that is that is chosen for your test. So if it's a 5%, it, it, the min and max would be plus or minus 5% for your test. And if you uh, need to perform, you know, pick up and drop off, there's a, a separate feature that you need to choose to be able to include the dropout test as well. All righty. Uh, Abel, how do I know the sequence components values when testing? Um, David, if you were kind enough, go to the home screen and um, and click on the advanced uh, button there next to the inputs. There, uh, you can see. Yeah. Uh, well, what I wanted you to select was the symmetrical, if you don't mind. Yeah. 
because that's the uh, that would be the question, right? You, you can you can uh, you can see a, uh, a series of parameters that have to do with the uh, uh, a system of voltages and currents that we are injecting, and uh, they are not only the symmetrical or uh, sequence components. We can also see power. Uh, we can see uh, the line-to-line -line voltages, and we can do this. Uh, we can see impedance. Uh, we can see the secondary values if we set the uh, um, our voltage and current um, uh, ratios, etc. And we can see this not only on the home screen, but we can also see it in the ramping screen. And we can see it on the sequencer, which uh, I think the sequencer is something that uh, we are going to cover on um, on another uh, another webinar when it comes to the actual the actual testing but the the, the, the answer would be if you want to see the sequence components that have to do with the set of voltages and currents that you're injecting you would click there and symmetrical and this will show you uh, what your uh, sequence components are all right all right uh, so David how do you actional L on RTMS? You, you cut out there for a second. What'd you say, Mike? Sorry, uh, how, uh, how do you test directional elements in RTMS? Okay, so we can do directional elements. Um, if you're doing the timing, we'll come into timing. And I'm gonna go back to the nameplate. And there's this little button here, it says direction. We hit none, so we have an option forward or reverse direction. We'll go forward and then this gives us the parameters that unlock for us to decide uh, what our voltage values are going to be um, what the phase angle needs to be and then your blinder if applicable if there's no blinder then what your MTA will be uh, usually is in the list it, you know old ledger mechanicals on the in the documentation a lot of times um, and what your step in degrees is going to be once this uh, gets populated out then when you hit OK that's 51 G1, 51 directional. Huh, I'll pay attention in a minute. So now we can actually test the directional piece. So when you when you go through the settings, what's really nice is that when you go through these settings and you start adding uh, values in here, then you start seeing different tests unlock. Right, so the test come up. This test wasn't was non-existent until you hit, went from none to forward, so or reverse, and then now we have a directional test that's actually in the drop-down list that gets populated. So that's really cool. So why muddy the water with a bunch of tests in here if you're not really testing it, right? So what we try to do is we try to put on the most common test in here, and then also you have the directional elements that that can be enabled as well. And then allow us to actually still perform these tests too with uh, the prefall values and such that we put into the nameplate. All right. Um, Sugosh, can I inject harmonic waveforms? Yes, uh, yes, you can. Uh, David, could you go to the home screen, please? So, so there are a couple of places where how you could uh, set the harmonic waveform generation. So the first way is to uh, go into the advanced view on the home screen and then uh, have something called as the harmonic waveform generator. So once we select that, it gives us options to uh, create uh, multiple waveforms of, of different frequencies. And, uh, um, so let's say if we go to the second waveform in there, and if we uh, decide to inject a second harmonic waveform, we would change the frequency to 120 Hertz on this screen, which is displaying the settings for the second waveform. And we would uh, give it some amplitude. And once we do that, you see there is an icon that, that is displayed right above that 120 Hertz. So what that means is that there is more than one waveform that is stacked on top of each other on I1 current channel alone. So, so this way you can inject uh, different harmonics uh, based on what, uh, the application that you're testing. Let's say if you're performing a electromechanical or a microprocessor uh, harmonic restraint testing on a differential relay, you could use this uh, feature to be able to inject your second harmonic or fourth or fifth harmonic. And another place you could set this up is uh, to be able to use the fault calculator screen. So, uh, 
if you go to the fault calculator screen and in the overcurrent mode so in there you have the option to include the harmonic content along with your uh, you know fault values so you have the option of going up to the 15th harmonic uh, and whatever percentage of that harmonic you would want to include in the waveform and these are the couple of places where you could uh, configure the harmonic waveform injection from rtms all right thank you and uh, i think we have time for one last question uh david can a template be added to the relay list uh yes it can uh it does take a little bit to get to it um if you have a specific template you would like to add to this relay list the relay library list is what's being asked um let us know and we'll kind of help you walk through that but you can uh add a a template to here that you have created into this list yes and these are pre to pre populated from the release version so when you go into the release uh, uh mega.com you're actually updating or or uh, if you hadn't already you go to rtms uh install the latest update then all of these are, are in the software um now if you once we put one in let's say it's relay z because it's going to come down here somewhere if you put that relay in and you update rtms then if we don't have that relay in the released version of PowerDB, whenever you update your system then that could very well go away you would have to re uh, import that relay template as well and it gives you a nice cool place to put all your relays in uh, and and two everybody's gonna be different right so uh, one guy might have four relays in there and one guy might have something different so we kind of do a generic um, but also you want to uh, you know you want the capability of putting your own stuff in there so yes it's uh, just just reach out to us uh, information uh, again is on uh, let me get you back here and uh, you know just reach out to us and let us know and we'll we'll definitely help you out yeah absolutely and on that note uh, it does look like that's all the time we have for questions we apologize if we didn't get your question today but we will follow up with you offline in the following or uh, reach out to us here on the contact information on your screen uh, a copy of this presentation certificate of attendance and a link to the video recording of the webinar will be emailed to everyone in about two business days. I'd like to thank you all for attending. If you could, please remember to answer our survey. That survey will include a field for you to request a quote or if you're interested, and you can let us know how we did today. But once again, I'd like to thank you all for attending, and I hope you have a great week.